And I'm primarily going to talk about preventing intracerebral hemorrhoids because it's the most severe intracranial bleed and also because that's what I know most about. The other patients is usually handled by the new surgeons, but I think as stroke physicians we actually have a work to do also in these patients because Neurosurgeons are not that much interested in antithrombotic therapy. They were rather that the neuro patient uh, was uh, on it. <clears throat> we already have seen that the incidence of ICAs is uh, unchanged uh, over the years, despite uh, better control of uh, hypertension, and it's probably due to uh, more elderly people and uh, increased use uh, of uh, antithrombotic uh, therapy. Uh, and uh, this slide uh, shows the number of patients uh, on uh, all anticoagulants in Denmark uh, in 2012 to 2016. It has been increased uh, by 58%, uh, mainly due to increased use of uh, NOAX uh, and the stable use of uh, vitamin K uh, antagonists. Um, this is good news. We have for many years seen the result uh, of uh, underuse of all anticoagulants uh, and a lot of patients admitted with uh, ischemic uh, stroke. Uh, but we have to uh, in, especially in these patients, be aware uh, of the risk uh, of uh, intracerebral uh, hemorrhage and uh, bleeding uh, in general. And regarding uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, hypertension uh, should be uh, well controlled. Um, regarding uh, the quality of uh, vitamin K antagonists, there's no evidence from uh, the NOAC trials uh, that a well controlled um, uh, vitamin K antagonist uh, therapy is uh, uh, preventing intracerebral hemorrhage. The, we couldn't see, it, there was no uh, correlation as there was uh, with the ischemic uh, events. Uh, we should uh, minimize the use of uh, antiplatelets. Uh, very few patients need antiplatelets in combination uh, with uh, oral anticoagulation and uh, should be on, only for uh, as short time as possible. Uh, no elderly patients should be on uh, NSAIDs. We should tell the patients uh, not uh, to drink uh, heavily. Um, and it will also, of course, uh, with the slides we, we all the, the previous talk, be logical uh, to prefer uh, NOAX uh, to uh, warfarin because of uh, the uh, profound lower risk of hemorrhagic stroke uh, and intracranial hemorrhage. When we are in the acute setting, if we are going to change the pro prognosis of patients with intracerebral hemorrhage, uh, we probably uh, have to reduce the risk uh, of uh, hematoma growth and also the amount uh, of uh, the hematoma growth. And this has been a positive side effect of uh, getting uh, stroke patients in uh, to the uh, stroke units early because of uh, thrombolysis. Uh, then we uh, get also get the patient with the intracerebral hemorrhage at an early time. And now we indeed have evidence that we can make a difference. Um, we have the INTERACT uh, 2 trial uh, with randomized patients uh, with a good onset uh, of uh, intracerebral hemorrhage uh, to uh, uh, intensive uh, blood pressure lowering uh, with a target uh, to uh, 140 or uh, standard uh, therapy. Uh, this secondary um, analysis with a shift analysis of the modified uh, ranking scale uh, was uh, significant and the number needed to treat uh, to prevent uh, one uh, severe uh, disability or uh, death uh, is uh, 28. 
Um, it turns out that um, the largest reduction in uh, hematoma enlargement if, uh, in this meta-analysis of the interact trials indeed uh, happens in the patient treated uh, very uh, early. Uh, and uh, the same result of, uh, is shown uh, here uh, uh, with the clinical uh, benefit uh, after uh, three months. Then uh, the attached uh, two trials uh, trial was uh, published uh, last year, and uh, it was patients with a very high blood pressure and treated with intravenous nicotabine within uh, 4.5 hours uh, after uh, symptom onset, and uh, the uh, target here was as low as 120. If you look at the standard treatment in this group, it was like in the interact 2 trial in the active arm. So <laughs> the standard treatment has in this field changed uh, fast. Th there was no uh, um, advanced uh, of uh, reducing the blood pressure as, as to this low level, but uh, there was no, no sign of uh, harm either. Uh, afterwards, there has also been an analysis of, of the ANTA-ACT2 trial, and it seems like uh, pa the patient who uh, gets uh, systolic blood pressure within the first day and between uh, the two and the seven days of 130 uh, other patients who are doing uh, best. We have invented our... Uh, Regret it's in uh, Danish, but we have it in, invented a flow chart. Uh, so, uh, as soon as we know that the patient have a bleed, we give intravenous labetolol. Uh, they get a transdermal nitroglycerin, uh, and they get a, um, a oral uh, tube. Uh, because most of the patients uh, have uh, this phagia, uh, and we give uh, all uh, nebodipine. And we have uh, shown that it is uh, possible to, with this strategy, uh, to get the blood pressure uh, low uh, fast, and we are now elevate, uh, evaluating it uh, in a, a clinical setting as well. Um, then uh, we, uh, there was patient with intracerebral glomerulus in general. And then we go to the about 15 to 20 percent who are uh, anticoagulated, and this was a patient we had previous with an ischemic uh, stroke. Normal reading, uh, renal function was put on uh, dabigatran, and he arrived uh, uh, less than two months uh, later uh, with uh, this uh, bleeding. And uh, it was in the very beginning of the Debecatran uh, era, and there was not given any f uh, kind of uh, antidote or reversal of his anticoagulation, and he uh, got uh, this uh, growth uh, of the hematoma uh, and died. Uh, it was within six hours. And in the ANTA-ACT uh, study as well, it has been shown that patients on anticoagulants indeed have a much higher in, uh, increase of uh, hematoma than uh, compared to patients on uh, no antithrombotic and also higher than patients on uh, antiplatelets. This study uh, was published last year where fresh frozen plasma was uh, compared to PCC in patients uh, with uh, either intracerebral hemorrhage or subdural hematoma uh, and who had, uh, was on a vitamin K antagonist and has uh, had an ENR of uh, 2 or above. Um, it was possible uh, to reduce the ENR within three hours in 67% of the patients treated with PCC and only in 9% of the patients uh, treated with, with uh, fresh frozen plasma. And uh, it was possible as well to show that the patient treated with PCC had a, a lower increase in uh, hematoma uh, growth than the patient treated uh, with fresh frozen plasma. Um, and the clinical outcome uh, of uh, the patients, uh, this is uh, survival, uh, was uh, also seems uh, to be better in patients treated with um, PCC. Um, 
However, it, because of a uh, small number of patients, it, it was not significant. Um, this is another study uh, where they have uh, not uh, in a randomized trial, but in an observational trial, looked upon uh, the uh, normalization of uh, the ENR. Uh, and if you look down here, then is the patient who had uh, early uh, re uh, normalization of uh, ENR and as well as a low blood pressure within the four st first uh, uh, four hours. And again, it seems that times uh, matters that uh, this uh, group is the uh, patients with uh, the lowest increase in uh, hematoma. There has uh, been uh, developed uh, antidotes. Uh, this is for uh, dabigatran, and uh, it's in the market. Uh, and uh, his has been. Uh, we can use it uh, on uh, on the background of uh, this uh, study, where uh, it was shown that in patient with. Uh, either a major bleeding, a life-threatening uh, bleeding, or a need for acute surgery, uh, the uh, anticoagulation uh, was normalized. The coagulation status, uh, status the hemostasis in the patient uh, were normalized. It was not a randomized trial, so it is not possible to uh, conclude about uh, clinical uh, events. A similar study has uh, been done uh, to uh, factor 10A inhibitor antidote, uh, which uh, is a um, uh, factor 10A, uh, which is uh, catalytic uh, inactive and uh, binds factor 10A inhibitors with high affinity and it works for all the factor 10A inhibitors. And there has been published uh, similar uh, data uh, as with the antidote to the difficult one, but it has not on the market uh, yet. Um, from the European guideline, uh, there is a recommendation about uh, bleeding. If you have a patient uh, on a NOAC, um, and if it's intercerebral uh, bleeding, it's a life-threatening bleeding, and I think you should go uh, uh, down here and consider a specific antidote, or until now PCC if no antidote is available. Of but in this situation, you have to be aware there's no data from clinical trials uh, concerning uh, this issue. And you are probably inducing a hypercoagulant uh, uh, state. What about the risk of your current uh, ICH after, after intercerebral uh, hemorrhage? This is a study uh, of uh, prospective follow-up study uh, from Boston with uh, more than 1,000 patients alive after 90 days, 640 patients with deep uh, ICH and 505 with a low bar ICH. And uh, they were divided whether the blood pressure was well controlled or uh, not well controlled, defined by a systolic blood pressure below or above uh, 140. And if a uh, patient with basal ganglia uh, bleedings usually associated with hypertension, the current rate if uh, the blood pressure was not well controlled was 5.2 compared to 2.7 if the blood pressure was well controlled. In patients with low bar uh, ICH, uh, most commonly uh, due to cerebral amyloid uh, uh, angiopathy, there's a very high rate of uh, recurrence rate, and especially in patients who are not well controlled uh, with uh, blood pressure. Um, there has been a lot of uh, studies recently uh, based on registers uh, to look upon uh, restarting uh, anticoagulation uh, therapy after either intracranial uh, or intracerebral uh, hemorrhage. And uh, two of them are uh, based uh, on the Danish uh, registers. This one is after intracranial hemorrhage and uh, it looks promising. 35% uh, of the patients in the study indeed uh, got on uh, uh, anticoagulation after an ICH. 
uh, this was patients only with uh, intercerebral hemorrhage uh, looks promising as well. We uh, were able to show in uh, Denmark that uh, date theft was reduced uh, to uh, one uh, with, uh, on, with 40%. Um, but however, I have to, <laughs> to say that there is a really high risk of selection bias uh, here. If you look uh, in this study, uh, it was only 15% who was restarted, and this study only 6.3% of the patients who were restarted. So you could, in a little provocative way, say that the patients who the stroke physicians, the neurologists, dare to start on all anticoagulation again, do properly well. It's very hard to uh, correct uh, for uh, severity of stroke, and uh, we tried, uh, but I think there's still a selection bias risk. Uh, we already uh, heard about this propensity score match follow-up uh, this uh, morning where uh, patients uh, in uh, the Nordic country uh, treated with uh, LAO uh, and previous intercerebral hemorrhage was compared to patients with uh, standard care from the Danish stroke register. Uh, and uh, this propensity match score is that you take one patient uh, with LAO occlusion and ICH and for whatever you can correct for match the patient was similar uh, who did not get the therapy. Um, and this slide is for the last version uh, of uh, the, survival, uh, the survival curve of uh, the combined uh, endpoint. And it turns out uh, even uh, better than you saw this morning uh, because we have submitted uh, the data, and there was a reviewer that, that asked about what about the time the patient were uh, matched, uh, were that uh, different? And w we have tried to say that patients should be alive for uh, half a year, but in this last version, we have matched the patients so they have been following the standard care at the same time after their intercerebral bleed as the patient who have got uh, the implant. Uh, as we told, uh, Jens Eric told earlier that we are going uh, to uh, initiate a randomized trial because I still need, we have to need, get the evidence for randomized trials. Um, we already have seen um, these guidelines uh, referred and are very happy to see that they have been endorsed by the European uh, Stroke uh, Organization. And uh, there is um, a suggestion if we should uh, restart uh, all anticoagulants uh, in patients with previous intercerebral hemorrhage. If it is a basal ganglia, if they have a high risk of ischemic stroke, if the blood pressure is well controlled, you can uh, consider it. There will be some of the other people, uh, patients with a very high risk for, of, of, of recurrent ICH, where uh, alternative uh, uh, solution will be preferred like LAA occlusion. Um, so management of intercerebral hemorrhage uh, in the acute phase as you are admitted to stroke units, it's probably um, beneficial to reduce the blood pressure as fast as possible. It's probably beneficial uh, to uh, reverse uh, anticoagulation therapy. The neurosurgeons are also developing uh, new techniques. Uh, so, uh, time lost is brain loss in uh, intercerebral hemorrhage as well in, as in uh, ischemic stroke. Thank you. Mm -hmm.